this year's theme song. That'll be our last one. Is that okay?
seat. Thank you to Little Fish for your contribution to Mountain View. Uh, how many have come to family worship before? Or I should say, oh yeah, you're back. Anybody in the first time? Oh man, take, take note of the first timers. Let's, let's get them good. Oh yeah. So, so before we start, I'm just going to introduce our, our, our speaker who will be our storyteller, Monica. Monica, she's uh, the better half of the Zill family there with Victor. And you can tell Victor I said that. It's okay. She's going to be telling our, our true mission story as we go through. I'm excited about it. So family worship, the philosophy behind it is that... As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we want to be men and women and children of God who worship him on a daily basis, but at the same time have fun, enjoy life, encourage others, allow them to be themselves, and not be in a dirge, a gloom and doom. You've got to be so miserable or you're not ready for translation type of thing. And if the children are not loving church, then church is not the place to be. We should have everything that we do that is inclusive to everybody. So that's the philosophy and the principle behind a family worship. And so far, I've heard nothing but positive at the, from everybody about family worship because we have fun in Jesus. So Pastor Stewart, uh, lead us on into the rest of the program. Ready for a good time? Walk over to this one. I want to welcome you to family worship. We're going to have a good time. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day, and I want to thank you for the fact that you, you give us spaces in time where we can have a lot of fun and at the same time learn about you. And I pray, Father, as we do that today, that your spirit will be with us, that all of us here will enjoy what goes on, and all of us will learn something that will help us to be better Christians for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, hi folks, how are you all doing? Remember, we smile in here, right? Come on, smile begets a smile, remember? Okay. All right, I've been asked to do a little health nugget. And the health nugget that I want to do is based on 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, where the Bible tells us that, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, whom you have received from God, therefore you're not your own, we should honor God with our bodies, okay? Now, I'm not a doctor, Steve, okay? But I'm just taking some results off here of Dr. Google, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about circulation. Circulation is very important in our bodies. Uh, sometimes, you know, we don't get the proper circulation. Uh, that we don't get the oxygen that our body parts need, and we start to have failure. And one of our body parts that is the furthest away from our heart is our toes, right? They usually have the hardest time getting the circulation that we need. So the way we can do that, uh, we can prevent that to get better circulation is to do some exercises, okay? How many loved exercise? Wow, how many loved exercise? How many of you hate it? How many could care less about anything? <laughs> anyway, here's what I want you to do. We're going to get some circulation going in our toes. So where you're sitting at right now, come on, be brave, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Take your shoes off. You can leave your socks on. And I want you to follow me now. Because you're going to appreciate this when you see what's going to follow after me. Okay, I want you, to, if you can, if you can't, don't worry, but try to hold your right foot up. I want you to bend your toes and flex them like this, okay? When I count. And at the end of 10, I want you to squeeze as hard as you can and then let go. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Squeeze. Hold it there. Hold it there. Oh, you can feel the blood going down. Okay, let go. All right, let's do the other side. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Squeeze, squeeze. Hold it there. Hold it, hold it. Don't let it go. Keep holding, keep holding. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Keep holding. Okay. All right, you can let go. That was just a little extra there. So now when you do this next part of our program, you're going to be ready and prepared for it. So you can put your shoes back on. If you want to leave them off, that's up to you. A minute, a minute to, to win, win it. it. All right. So well, we're going to get some volunteers. I need you to pick out four volunteers. You want me to pick out all four? Well, I, if I get this ice done soon enough. So we need some volunteers. There's got to be kids first. All right, all right. We want Gideon, Nate, Courtney put her hand up there, and uh, the one in the blue back there. Gideon. See the kid? Courtney's not a kid. She'll play against the kids. Oh, okay. So here, let's come on, help me out here. We gotta get these things in here. Ooh, that's cool. Ah. Okay, I need all of you to sit down on a chair. Everybody on the chair? Okay. Courtney, take your chair. Mix them in here a little bit. Okay, now I need you to take off your shoes and your socks. We told you Jimmy got you all warmed up, did he not? Everybody's warmed yes. up and ready to go. Oh, this is going to be so much now, fun. Now, you got to get the marbles out without taking any ice out. If you take Where's any ice bowls? out. Where did their bowls go? With what? Oh, here they are, right here. Two I bowls. think you moved them. I now, moved them. if you take any ice out... We're going to deduct some, some points for, for the marbles. If any ice goes in the bowl, that's deduction. That's right. Okay? So what you got to do, come on, Gideon, that sock, stick it off. Here. Hard. 
<laughs> there, done. All right. So, there you make go. it take a long time. Okay, so we're going to give you a minute to win it. Whoever gets the most marbles from the book, from here, this bowl into that bowl, that's the winner. Now, I was watching you people stretch your toes. And you know, he said, clamp your toes. And some of you were doing that. Amber's clothes were going like this. Foot didn't move. Toes going like this. Like she's got a hand on her foot. Mercy. A lot of you guys were just going like that. We're going to find out who's got a hand on their foot now, okay? Well, all right. I think it's time we got to start. Okay, are you so ready So we're going to start in... Can we make it the big screen? Hold on, Stuart. It's coming. The game begins in three, three two, two, one. one. Go, 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 go. Some, some of them started early. Toes. Get some marbles out. Use your toes. Oh! oh not in the bowl. Oh, she has that. tossed that oh, one over man. to him. That was good. Oh my goodness, he, he stole that dumb. marble right that was from a great the camp move director. Right now I want you to know Amber thought they should all be blindfolded doing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think no, so. We only got one in there because they stole okay, it from the it's camp one director. To one and he got his one from her. Oh. Mercy. Where's that camera? Come on. Nate, you got a big bit feet down in there. Now, now they get it in their toe and they can't get it out. Come on, use your soccer feet, Nate. <laughs> oh my goodness. We only got about 12 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And okay, we have, oh. Whoa, we have a winner. But I, she's not a kid. Is this fair? No, it's not. But but plus, she knocked all that ice out, and I just don't think that's going to work. Did she pick the marbles up off the floor? I, no? I didn't. I, no, no, no. But she knocked that ice everywhere. That doesn't count. That's a deduction. That's a three-point deduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, we got two in here. Two in here. He, he, oh, he here's the winner right here. Yeah. All right. We got a winner. Joshua. Joshua is the winner today. Yeah. All right. So... You guys can go, go pick out your toys over yeah, there. Yeah, everybody's over to a winner when it comes and to she'll toys. Get you your toys. Even you, Courtney, you have to pick out a toy. All right, now. Now, should we, we got, get rid we got of this something? ice and put new ice in it since they had their feet in it? Yeah, sure. While you're doing that, I'm going to pick out our volunteers. So, we're going to do something new this year for a minute to win it. We're going to have an adult class. Now, I know I just had the camp director up there, but it made sense. So, do we have any adults that want to volunteer? Thanks, Rich. We'll, we'll go ahead and choose you right here. So we got two. We got Rich Fulmer's going to come up um, right here. And we'll have Melissa do it. Here we go. Yeah, thank you, Rich, for volunteering. Let's give Rich a hand. Wow. This is not easy. All right, have a seat, everybody. Hey, by the way, this isn't even easy doing it by hand, okay? <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We'll fix that. This ice is cold, man. There's not a lot of ice in this one. You got that bag? Well, Somebody we were gonna, knocked a bunch of ice out of here. Do you guys mind if we use the same ice? Yes. Okay. No, no. Okay. All right. So let's mix them in here a little bit. All right. All right. Here we go. She's got, she's gonna be the handicap there. We got half ice. <laughs> yeah. This is not communion, even if I kneel down before you. Okay. So. All, all right. right. So we're about to start here right now. You, what you're going to do is we're going to find out which adults are really skilled. Yes. And we oh. got a great prize for all of you as well. Oh, man, you're going to love the prize. So we're ready for another one minute to win it. Timer? Yes. Are you guys so ready gonna for this? So we're going to start here. The music is playing. Are you ready? Who's excited to see these adults do this, huh? We're about to start here in three, two, two, two one. Go go, 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 Get some ice out of there. Get some, get, come on, Rich. Let's go. No, no. Well, yeah. Oh, Melissa got one in. Oh, Melissa's got skills. I think she's done this before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I see skills uh -oh. over here. Oh. Rich, you got it, man. 
Oh, come on, Rich. It's not in there. <laughs> Rich was trying to put one in, but it wasn't in his toes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We got, I think Marissa, she's got two in over there. It's a close one right now. She's about to get three she or got four. four. She, she just two put in two in at oh, look once. Look at this. Look at this. I told you. Smooth. She put oh, on she top got two in, toes. too. She did it from the top of her toes. That Rich, Rich is knocking ice out. Ten. You're going to get nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we have a loser right here. Rich. <laughs> Now, wait a second. Uh, wait, oh, look at this. Oh, my we goodness. Two, that's second place. We have one. She was ahead. She had one out early. Yes, yeah, she uh, And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good seventh day. We should have blindfolded her. Where is an ice cube in there? It melted. Oh, there it doesn't is. even count if it melts. And sorry, you're still the winner. All yes. right. Okay. All on. right. So, adults, we have a great prize for you. You can go over to Amber and pick out a toy. And once you get the toy, we, we expect you to play with that at home. And there's a lesson from this that we can learn, isn't there? You guys need to go pick up your toys as soon as you get your yeah, shoes on. Yeah, get them toys. So, it's like a happy so, meal. So there's a lesson that we can learn from all of this. They get the same toys as the kids, okay? That's, that's what it becomes. A, that's not the lesson. The okay. lesson is this. Sometimes when we're looking at things that we're called on to do, it's difficult. That's true. It's very it's true. difficult, and, 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 and yet God calls us to do something, and, and so we try to do it, and we stick our toes in the water, so to speak, and we can't get anything out, and then I watched one person take two marbles out at one time on top of their foot. I don't know how they got the marbles on top of their foot, but you know, it's like God did that for them. Sometimes he does that for us. Well, yeah. And put them in the bowl, and God will do that for you. If God calls you to do something and you start to do it, he will enable you to do it, Amen. unless you're rich. Rich wasn't able to get any marbles out of the bowl. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I think he was just looking out for him. He, he knew he didn't need a, any toys because Cameron has all the toys he needs. Cam Cameron has a lot of toys. That's true. Yes, he does. All right. All right thank you, guys. Thank Have you. a good day. God bless. Good morning. How is everyone? Good. The story we're going to be reading this morning, I'm going to be reading throughout the week, is Fire on the Mountain. And it's a true story that happened quite a few years ago. So, and I think there might be a picture that we can start with on this. The Escape. Among the hills of Borneo, there is a sparkling pool set like a jewel in a hollow of the rocks. A pool so clear that it looks as though a child might wade through it, but it is really 20 feet deep. There it lies, surrounded by grassy slopes and a great forest of trees. The stream that feeds down into it flows down the mountain on a stony bed and bubbles and makes a lot of sound as it goes. There in the Dusan village, clinging to the green slope above the pool, and the music of the river has given this village its name, Singing Water. It was in this village of Singing Water that something wonderful happened. The time was not long ago and the season was summer because it's always summer there in the mountains. Soxy stood on the edge, where was that picture? Okay, on the edge of the shining pool early in the morning. He studied his reflection in the water, and he looked into the bl as it mirrored back at him, and he was pleased. No other 12-year-old boy in the mountains was stronger or better formed than he was. But he was mumbling to himself, this is the last day. This is the last day. He moved his lips but wasn't really making any sound, and the truth was that Soxy hardly knew if he was happy or sad. He would go home after today or to, to this day to his own village of broken light. And after living for five years in singing water, he was going back to broken light. It was six miles up the mountain to his father's home. He had been living in singing water ever since his mother had died. And he was only seven years old when that happened. He had come to live with his father's uncle or his father's brother, Uncle Sobot, and his wife, Aunt Gar. 
Once he had loved this village, but now it had become unbearable. Once it was safe and beautiful, now it was spoiled. He had talked the matter over with Kooning, the witch doctor of his own village. Kooning advised him to return to his father's house immediately in broken light. Saxi heard a sound. It came from behind a large rock at the water's edge. It was a sound of words. Some person was talking. He could not hear much of what was being said, only caught a few words, Bapa, which means father. The word was repeated several times, and there was only one voice, and no one answered it. With a quiet, cat-like step, Soxie crept down closer until he could see what was behind the rock. He stood very still, hardly breathing. And he saw just what he thought he would see, the new teacher, Rajan. Rajan was there behind the rock. He was alone, yet he was talking to someone. He was kneeling on the sand, and his eyes were closed, and his hands were lifted, and his face, it was covered with gladness. He saw the strength in the young teacher's raised hands and his arms. His white shirt and his trousers were a lot like what the one socks he wore. The boy turned away and slipped into the pool of water, not making a sound. He was a good swimmer. He loved to swim around in that clear water. There was no pool of water in the, in the village of Broken Light. There, the people just got all their water from a little spring that they had piped down the mountain. <sighs> he would miss these dips in the pool every day. He would miss his Uncle Sobot and his Aunt Gar and little Vivi, his cousin. He would miss her a lot. Well, he couldn't help it. Ever since this new teaching had come to singing water, he had felt troubled and uneasy and very uncomfortable. Kooning's advice was good. He would go back to Broken Light, where the old witch doctor ordered everything according to the customs of their tribe that they had observed for hundreds of years. No one in Broken Light planted or harvested or got married or did anything without the advice of Kooning. They were fortunate to have him living among them, yes. Even the people of Singing Water called on him for charms and advice because Singing Water did not have a regular witch doctor of their own. But now this new teacher had come. Kooning told all the people in both villages to pay no attention to the stranger. This teaching is bad. Listening to it is like drinking a poisonous liquor, he said. It makes people happy, but it destroys all the old customs and makes spirits angry. He, the end would be trouble. You boys stay away from it. Then the old man had turned to Soxy. And his long yellow teeth clicked together as he talked. You must return to your father's village and his house right away. You are big enough now to help him. You don't need your aunt's care anymore. You can cut the brush and carry the wood and boil the rice. Soxy steadied, him, steadied himself in the pool. He was thinking about how it had all happened. Rajan's voice startled him. A peaceful morning to you, the teacher called. Peaceful morning to you, Soxy answered according to the polite custom. Will you swim well? Rajan had watched the lad swimming and diving. Perhaps I shall do better when I have been here as long as you. Soxy didn't answer these words, but he thought in his heart, this man plans to stay a very long time. The poison of his teaching will spread everywhere, and it will spoil everything. I'm glad I'm going back to broken light. The boy crawled out of the water and started running up the slope, and Rajan called to him, Come sing with us tonight. It's a great pleasure to sing. Don't you think so? Soxy turned to look at the teacher, who now was swimming in the pool. kind of observed him. There was something different about the teacher. He was clean, kind of looked like the people of his own village, but he radiated happiness. And his voice had the sound of joy and laughter in it. <laughs> Soxy felt angry. I shall not come and sing, Soxy said in a low voice. Today I will go back to my own village. Hearing this, the teacher, Rajan, jumped out of the pool and stood beside him. Are you going to, the, to Broken Light? Are you going to stay there? Yes, I will stay there always, the boy replied. Rajan laid his hand on the boy's shoulder. 
You have heard some of the teaching about God. You know that he is our great father up in heaven. He pointed to the sky. You know that he can always help you when you are in any trouble. Even in your village of broken light, he will be close to you. Talk to him. He will hear you. Soxie drew away from the friendly grasp of the teacher and without any more words, scrambled up the hill to his uncle's house. When he got to the kitchen in the little hut, Aunt Gar smiled at him. Come, eat your rice. And she ladled some onto a banana leaf and put on some boiled vegetables and some fish. And he sat down on the floor and began to eat. The breakfast was good and he remembered all the good meals Aunt Gar had cooked for him. And now he was going to go home and have to cook his own rice. There was no woman at his father's house. Soxy was big enough to do all the cooking for both of them. Cooning, the witch doctor had said so. Vivi sat on the floor next to him eating her own rice. She was big for her age, but she sat quietly and said nothing. In all her life, she had never spoken a single word. She could cry and make some odd noises of pain or surprise, but she could never, neither hear nor speak hear nor speak. Perhaps from, for this reason Uncle Sobot had loved this child more than ordinary, more than with ordinary tenderness. Even Soxy felt a fierce affection for the little girl who was only six. Her body was so perfect but had no hearing and no words. While Soxy ate his food, the little child looked toward him often and smiled in a questioning way. She seemed to feel kind of uneasy in his manner. Could she guess that he was going to be leaving today? By midday, he was ready to go, and all that he owned was put in a bohongan little backpack made out of bark. It was heavy. Put it on his shoulders, and it strapped on his head, and he headed off up the village, up, up the mountain towards broken light. He was glad that the teacher had not seen him leave, because if he had, Rajan would have stopped him and wanted to talk more about this god. He wanted none of that. He was leaving this place with this hateful teaching. He would not need to worry about it anymore. And he regretted now that he had stayed so long. It must have been two moons, two months, since Rajan had come to sing, singing water. And every night, Rajan had gathered all the people into his home and taught them all songs about the God of heaven. He talked to them from the book of his magic. Soxie had gone to listen. He could recall many of the words of the book and he remembered more of the songs than anything because of the catchy tunes and it came back to his mind and fastened himself in there. <clears throat> Never mind. He would forget it soon. He would follow the good advice of Kooning and all would turn out well. He might even become a witch doctor himself one day when he was old enough. He was out of sight of the village now and oh, he was tired. Took off his heavy backpack and set it down to rest. It was heavy. And as he sat, his attention was drawn across the path, and there at the base of the tree was a swarm of caterpillars clustered on the trunk. They weren't just any caterpillars. They were fire caterpillars. And their gray-green bodies just covered the entire bark of the tree and walked, and he knew that if he ever touched them, they would burn really bad, and he was told to never mess with them. But he was so drawn to watch them. And he said, it's just like the teaching of Rajan. It's running all over singing water, but it can't hurt me if I don't touch it. He got to his feet and put on his heavy behongan again and started back up the steep mountain, stopping often to rest. Always his thoughts kept going back to the teacher. Why can't I get him out of my mind, he sputtered to himself, and he tried to think of other things. Then he started thinking of the fun that he remembered having in broken light. They had, when he was young, they had um, evenings where they would all get together and gather and, and have party with drums, and they would drink a little rice wine. His father, Paku, was very good at creating and making this, this rice wine. And he knew that he was going to enjoy that when he got back to Broken Light. They used to do that in springing water, singing water, but since Rajan had come, there was no time for that because every night they were all gathered in his house singing praises to Jesus or to God instead.
with a start. He saw that the sun was starting to go down, and he was not yet home. Oh, no, he thought to himself. There are all kinds of wild animals in the jungle. But the worst of all is the wild pigs. So now he started stepping slowly. What would he do? He didn't have any kind of light. He's like, no, I'll walk faster. So he started walking faster. His heart was throbbing like crazy, but then it was so dark, he was stumbling. So he slowed down, climbing carefully, trying to be very quiet because the creatures of the night had come out of the forest and he knew what they were, leopards and bears and tigers. Oh, <laughs> oh my. And um, there were wild pigs, a great big evil creature with razor sharp tusks and those tusks could really hurt an individual. He shuddered and felt paralyzed. Then he heard a sound. Something was creeping along the path or was it in the brush? Oh, he, where, where could it be? The frightened boy drew his knife out of his belt and leaned his bahongan against the tree. He stood still. Would it protect? That would protect his back. He lifted the knife. Soxy crouched in the path with his back up against the, the, the tree. Oh, goodness. Then the sound stopped. The jungle was quiet. But in his terror it still remained his mouth was dry and bitter and his hands shook and the strength in his body seemed to just melt away then the words came to him not words that could really be heard but words that hung close in the air and compelled his heart to listen they were the words Rajan had spoken that morning by the pool below singing water he can always help you in any kind of trouble talk to him he will hear you the boy, boy felt a great big sob pressing in his throat. His mind rejected the thought of Rajan's God, but his, heart, but, it, but his heart in its terror was like a small pitiful creature running to any refuge that opened before it. Without wanting to, without even meaning to, his thoughts flew to the God of heaven. Just then a light flashed down the path that led to the village. That light and the crashing sound of a grunting in the brush showed him that it indeed was a wild pig. Frightened by the light, the pig scrambled off into the jungle and a voice called out to him through the night. It was his father, Paku. He held a burning torch in his hand. Soxy, Soxy, the light came closer. Are you there? His father must have heard the noise of the wild pig. The boy was too surprised and relieved to answer at once. His father had almost reached him before he even said a word to him. I am here, father. He felt weak all over and cold and sweat stood out on his face and shoulders. Kooning said you would come today, his father started, and I began to worry because you were not home yet. It is good you have come. Then his father took the heavy bahongan and carried it for him. And they made their way back to their house in broken light. Paku had prepared some rice and told him to eat, and Soxy felt so tired that food really didn't sound so good at that point. He only picked at it, and his father started asking many questions about the teacher. Is it true that the medicine of Rajan cures sick people? Maybe, the boy answered, but people are also helped by Kooning's medicine. Tell me, the older man's eyes glistened in the light, tell me, how does your Uncle Sobot, my brother, feel about this new witchcraft? Uncle Sobot and Aunt Gar go every night to hear the words of the sing and, and sing the songs. So does everyone else in the village. Soxy left off eating and sat looking at his father. You are tired from the hard climb up the mountain. Go bathe, then you can sleep. We'll talk tomorrow. So Soxy went down to the little trickle of the spring and got cleaned up and tried to lay down. He felt better after his bath and went to his sleeping mat. But in spite of his weariness, he found it hard to sleep. His mind went back to the terrible moment on the path, and he recalled, for just an instant, his heart had gone out to the God of heaven. He hadn't wanted to. He hated the God of heaven. Yet in his fright, and he had almost turned to him. Almost. Perhaps in his heart, he really had called on God, the God of Rajan. Ugh. Then came the light in his path, the path and his father's voice calling his name. Could the God of heaven answer so quickly? 
He felt prickly all over and his heart beat fast. He twisted and turned on his mat. When he did fall asleep, he woke up often. Tunes of songs rippled through his head that Rajan had taught them. The next morning, Kooning came to visit. Peaceful morning, he could hear his father, Paku, saying. I have a good thought, the witch doctor said, coming in and settling on him the mat. Our son has come home. His yellow teeth, can you picture him? Shouldn't we have a little celebration in his honor? You have some fine rice wine and I have some. We could make a little feast and have some dancing and music. The boy will feel that we are so glad he is home. That's a fine idea, Paku said. What do you think, Soxie? The boy nodded. I have been looking forward to our parties. There has not been anything like that and singing water for a long time. Kooning shook his head in sadness. That's too bad. That abominable teaching, it spoils everything. He stomped his foot and shook his fist. We will keep all the old customs lively here in this village. Perhaps some of the people of Singing Water will move up here and get away from that god teacher. Kooning was a small man, old and kind of dried out like a green fruit that had laid in the sun too long. His hair was thin and a little gray, and his nose stood up from his face more than usual, and it was sharper and more than the ordinary nose, and his yellow teeth were loose and they clattered when he talked fast or became excited. He was kind of a restless fellow, and his hands were always working and twisting and waving about. Kooning talked a lot. He knew everyone's business, and nothing in the village happened without his supervision. There was a peculiar glittering quality about his eyes. They were not bright or clear. Years of drinking had taken any of the freshness out of his expression, but there was something sharp and sly about them. Soxie looked into Kooning's eyes as he spoke. Do you think if you went to the village of Singing Water, you could persuade Uncle Sobot and Aunt Gar to stop going to the teacher's house? Mm, I already talked to them, Sobot. To, to Sobot, the old man waved his hands and shook them about. I talked to him, and he answered that he will hear all about the new teaching first. Then he will decide. At sundown a couple days later, the, all the preparations were in place for their, their evening party. They started passing the, white, the rice wine around. Drums were playing. People started to dance and get drunk. In a little bit, somebody brought Soxie a coconut full of the liquor. He said, people are watching me. I got to drink it, you know. He had normally only had a little bit. So here he goes, downs the whole thing. Oh, immediately his stomach realized that was a mistake. He got up and ran out behind his father's hut and violently disposed of said drink. He lay on the ground rolling around. He could still hear the music and everyone was getting quite rowdy. Finally, he got up and felt better enough to walk back in to where everyone else was. Then he started thinking. Maybe, maybe this is loud enough that people in Singing Water could hear. Yeah, they could hear and see how much fun we're having. And he realized, nope. They can't hear. They're all in Teacher Rajan's house singing their own music. They wouldn't hear this at all. The boy was startled by his own thoughts. Where was the gladness in this feast? The gladness, he remembered. Where is the happiness of this group of villagers gathered under the stars and the coconut palms drinking and making this frightful racket? This was not what he had expected, not like his memories. Something must be wrong. As the night advanced, people got more and more drunk getting crazy, and an argument broke out. It was between the chief of Broken Light and his son, Jawab. Not sure what they were arguing about. Jawab was about 16. They started wobbling to their feet and arguing, and their voices got louder and louder. It was impossible to even understand what the quarrel was about. But then they started screaming at each other and started throwing punches and fighting and pushing Got, the struggle got so fierce it came over to where Soxy was sitting and he stood up to move out of their way. Everybody knew that Jawab would be chief one day. 
He was quick and slender and very strong, but his father was much stockier and heavy and had great strength. The two wrestlers dragged and pushed and clawed at each other. Cooning the witch dog... Um, nope. Skip something. The two wrestlers dragged and pushed and clawed each other, and they were coming closer to where Soxie was. And all of a sudden, in a burst of fury, the, the chief threw his son down onto the, to the ground, and Jawab screamed out in terrible pain, Ah! Cooning the witch doctor hurried over to him. One leg stuck out from him, his side in a grotesque angle. It seemed to be unjointed at the hip. The young man was in frightful pain. He screamed in agony for several minutes in spite of his mother trying to calm him down. Then he lapsed into unconsciousness. After all, he was drunk. The old chief sank down exhausted on the ground. It was plain that he had no idea what had happened. He too was filled with rice wine, rice wine, and he began to snore. <sighs> On the trampled grass in the moonlight, the chief lay there beside his son, Jawab. The women gathered around and looked at Jawab's terribly injured leg. They began to wail and grieve because they all knew jo Jawab was the only living son of the chief and his wife. They had had seven other children, but all of the others had died as babies. Now the chief's only son was gravely injured, and by his own father nonetheless, in a drunken fight. Kooning and Paku looked at each other. They had been drinking too, but not as much as the others, and realized what a dreadful thing had just happened. Now what shall we do? Paku asked the witch doctor. Kooning twisted his hands together in a frenzy of worry and fright. Oh, you can never walk again, the witch man whispered. Oh, in his, it is the anger of the spirits. He can never be chief. Whoever saw the chief with a leg sticking out at an angle like that? The young man moved in a drunk, just a little bit, in his stupor. His breath came in dry snores, and he moaned with every breath. <gasps> with Soxie's help, they moved him, Jawab, to his father's house, which was only a short distance away near the hut of Paku, and there they laid him on the mat. Soxie was left alone with Jawab for a moment while the other two men went back to drag the chief back home. The boy stood, down, stood looking down at Jawab. A strange thought crossed his mind. What about the god of Rajan? Could he help someone with trouble like this? No one in the village of Broken Light knew what to do. God. God. The thought of God frightened him. Where did it come from even? He felt sickness rising up in his stomach again. It must be almost morning and the, there was light just starting to show over the mountains. When Kapu and Kooning dragged the chief to the mat in the same room, they came to stare at Jawab. Then Kooning hurried out the door. He had gone to fetch some of his charms, of course. Father, Soxie told Paku and took his hand. It was cold and shaking. Father, the words were forced because he almost didn't want to say them. The teacher, Rajan, of singing water, he, he, he might know what to do. Paku looked at Soxie. Then he turned to see if Kooning might be lingering at the door. The trembling man fixed his eyes on his son. You have been home only three days, and already you want to send for the God teacher? There was anger in his face. No, I don't want to. I don't want to, Soxie insisted. But, but I feel sorry for Jawab. It's hurting him so much. How can his leg get any better if it's not pulled back into to straight again? Paku did not answer. In a minute, Kooning had come into the room. In one hand, he carried a dried crocodile, and in the other, a big bag of charms, and his face was dark with furies. What's this you say? He turned to Soxie, screaming to him in anger. That leg will stay exactly like it is unless it goes back into place itself. We will not have that teacher coming in this village and spoiling all of our pleasures like he's done in singing water. No! The chief's wife had called all her relatives now, and a crowd was beginning to gather. Soxie felt faint and ill. He slipped out the door and ran to his father's hut and threw himself on his sleeping mat. When he had wakened, it was broad daylight. The sun was halfway to the zenith, and he heard voices outside, voices that he recognized. 
Let's have a word of prayer. Now, you have to be here every morning if you want to hear the rest of the story. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be here together and hearing of ways that you have answered and done amazing things in the past and in the present. Um, be with us today. Be with our, all the activities that are going on, all the seminars that will be presented, Lord. May each one of us internalize what you have for us today. Uh, thank you. In that your name, amen. <laughs>